Are you in control or controlling? This is part 4. The final part of this series, the secret to being more in control. What helps distinguish great leaders and managers is about being more in control and quite literally how hands-on you are. One thing that separates the calm and joyful person from the stressed and depressed is a useful balance of something we learned in part 1 of this series, known as the locus of control. So a quick recap please, Dr. John. Someone with an internal locus of control believes that he or she can influence events and their outcomes, while someone with an external locus of control blames outside forces for everything. In general terms, if you believe that everything is beyond or outside your control, then you are likely to be more anxious, highly stressed and quick to blame others for all failings typified by someone in the controlling cycle. You may feel stressed because you believe that everything depends entirely and exclusively on you and your efforts. Or you may be feeling stressed because you believe that nothing at all is within your control. Someone normally in control has a high internal locus of control meaning that you accept responsibilities that your abilities and effort determine your outcomes. An internal locus of control is going to bring you more benefits in the long term as you choose to be at cause for your life. But let me be clear, it's a belief that you can influence events and their outcomes not always control them. What we need is an appropriate balance of being in control. Indeed, oftentimes we need to loosen our grip to gain control. When you first learnt the game of golf, the chances are that you gripped the club tightly. After all, this is basically holding on to a stick that you will swing through the air and hit a ball, allowing the club to follow through. If you don't hold on tight, the club might just go as far as the ball. It might feel as though you need to keep a very tight hold, but most often loosening your grip is the better option. I appreciate that you may not have ever played golf. For you, perhaps an alternative like the tight grip of a golf club to the tight grip of the reins of a horse or controlling your dog on a very short leash, holding on tight to your child's hand. New golfers have to learn how to let go to relax their grip. If a tight grip is a 10 on a scale, we want about 4 out of 10. The same is true of leadership and the way we hold on to our people. Hold on too tight, micromanage them, and people have little freedom to use their own skills and strengths. Hold on too tight to the club, and it is the golfer doing all of the work. So the question is, as a leader, who should be doing the work? The manager or leader or the member of staff? The golf club is weighted for a reason. If you allow the club to do the work, the swing and striking of the ball becomes almost effortless. Relax your grip on your team and allow them to excel at what they do and the work becomes almost effortless. Once you know as a golfer that the club is designed to do the job of striking the ball and your job is simply to swing and allow physics to do its job, you can relax. You maintain just enough to control to ensure alignment, direction and distance and the ball will fly according to the club that is used and the size of the swing. If you want a long distance, you use a long club and a full swing. A short distance off the fairway onto the green requires a shorter distance club 
and a smaller swing. The power to achieve the distance lies in the tool being employed and the chosen swing. The rest is just pure physics. So what can we learn as a leader? Well, isn't it the same? Make sure that you are using the right tool. The person needs the right skill set and or mindset to do the required job. The leader's job is to have a little control to ensure that the skills are employed in the right direction for the right distance. That's about judging how far it is to the goal and translating that into the swing itself. In the case of people, the swing is influence and motivation. Let the staff do the rest. Which reminds me that we need to clarify an often mistaken difference between delegation and empowerment. Delegation is not empowerment. Many of my clients have been making this error in thinking that delegation is the same thing as empowerment. It is not. Delegation is the action or process of delegating or being delegated. As a leader, you give the delegate the responsibility to do something and you give them your authority to do it. Some call this power and hence the confusion. Empowering. Empowering is the action of giving someone the freedom to do something by equipping them or supplying them with the necessary abilities, knowledge, authority and right to do something for themselves or on your behalf. To truly empower someone, a leader needs to encourage, because this task is beyond their current comfort zone, to develop them with the knowledge and the skills that they will need to accomplish the task effectively, to guide them in the use of their new skills, knowledge and authority in a safe environment, and then you may empower them. We call it EDGE, E-D-G-E. Encourage, develop, guide, empower. And it's why we misspell advantage. When you've empowered them, then you delegate with your authority to use that power. When you do not truly empower your staff, it's likely that you're not even delegating, but rather abdicating your own responsibilities because you have failed to do something. Perhaps you don't like it or you cannot do it yourself. When you have truly empowered someone, you have put them in control so that they can overcome their challenges. And just like that golf ball landing exactly where you both planned and wanted it to be for the next shot, you celebrate. Unlike golf, though, you praise your glove and you thank them for their effort. After all, they did all the work. When we use this metaphor in our golf leadership workshop, the feedback is instant. Hold tight onto the club, and the golfer has to use a great deal of effort and the ball often ends up being pulled, pushed, sliced or hooked, going two thirds of the required distance. Relax the grip, maintaining directional control, and the ball flies straight to the full distance of the club and the swing used. For non-golfers, if you try this with a horse, hold tight, the horse will slow down, even when you whip it. Your dog on a short leg stays by your side, whilst it's pulling your arm out of your socket and your child, well, your child dangles from your hand as you cross the road. When the going gets tough, leaders in control loosen their grip. Many leaders who say that they 
in power are really trying to hold on tight to control. If I don't teach them who or what, then they need me. If I don't tell them why, then that proves that I am the big chief and proves that I am in control. And my ego likes that, says the leader, anxiously fearful of losing power. New golfers in particular find their grip tightening in more difficult situations. The very moment when they need to be most at ease, most truly in control, fear envelops them, pressure builds, the grip tightens and the ball won't go to stray. The same is true of business leaders under pressure. Listen to the media hype about the doom and gloom of the current economic situation and fear can easily creep into the mind. Many leaders respond by tightening their grip on their people and their businesses, being causes as the only route. Believing that the tighter they hold, the more control they have, and the more likely they are to survive and pull through. Albeit, they expend huge amounts of effort, feel incredibly stressed, and more than likely, they're going to explode a blood vessel. As I write this and, and record this now. We are still emerging from the COVID pandemic and many leaders are trying to insist that their staff return to the office. For most, is it really about culture or is it about control? Is it really for the best for the whole organisation or is it the best for the leaders who like being in the office? One good thing that came from this pandemic has been the enforced empowerment of staff to make choices about where they work safely. And those companies and leaders who truly empowered and didn't simply abdicate responsibility saw significant maintained improvements in productivity, engagement and profitability. Tough times in business are better served by leaders keeping a clear head, a loose grip, maintain direction and empower your people to do what they do best. My advice? Ignore the noise, the media, doom and gloom. Look for the opportunities and focus on the purpose and command intent for your team and your organisation. Choose the right clubs. Loosen your grip and let your clubs do the work. Loosen your grip and you'll have more control. Be greatly blessed. Thank you, Dr. John. Remember to let us know what you think and share this advanced edge guide with someone you know needs to loosen their grip. And if you want to learn how we can help you and your team gain your leadership advanced edge, contact us at joyatwork.coach. Apply.